Hello, this is Mr. Huber. In this lesson, we're going to learn about multiplying polynomials. Multiplying polynomials is all based off of using the distributive property. If we look at an example here of the distributive property, right, we've got 5 and then the parentheses 4x minus 8. So if we recall our order of operations, first we'd want to simplify inside here. Well, we can't. 4x and minus 8, we can't combine those. They're not like terms. But we can distribute. We can multiply the 4x times 5 and the negative 8 times 5. The 5 gets distributed and multiplied to everything inside the parentheses, each of those terms. So 5 times 4x is 20x, minus 5 times 8 is 40, and so that would simplify to 20x minus 40 using the distributive property. There's nothing else we can do, right? Those aren't like terms, so that's the distributive property. Well, we can do that with monomials and other polynomials as well. For instance, in number one here, to find the product, we can distribute the 2x to the third into the parentheses. So we'd get 2x to the third times 4x squared would be 8x to the fifth. We multiply the coefficients, the 2 and the 4, and when we multiply like bases, x and x, so the same bases, right? We add their exponents when you're multiplying. So 3 plus 2 would be 8x to the fifth. And then we'd have 2x to the third times negative 8x squared. Pay attention to the signs. That's negative 16, 2 times negative 8, and x to the fourth. And then plus 22x to the third. So when we're multiplying polynomials, you multiply a monomial times another monomial. You multiply the coefficients. And pay attention if there's variables. The bases that are the same, you will then add their exponents. There are several methods for multiplying polynomials that are not monomials. There we just distribute it in. Well, really, when we see a problem like this, this is the distributive property twice. We're going to distribute the x into the other parentheses, and then we're going to distribute the plus 6 into the other parentheses. So let's see what that looks like. So we distribute the x into the parentheses first. So that's going to be x times negative 4x would be negative 4x squared. Then x times 7 would be plus 7x. Next, we can distribute the 6 into the parentheses. So 6 times negative 4x is negative 24x. Sometimes people will write that underneath the 7x. So you keep lined up the things that are like terms. You don't have to. I'm going to show you some different ways to do this. I said there's more than one method for how to organize these types of problems. And then the 6 times 7 will be the plus 42. And now I want to notice here that I have like terms, I can simplify those. I can add and subtract those because they're the same variable of the same power. So I have negative 4x squared. That didn't change. And I have 7x minus 24x. It's minus 17x and then plus 42. And that would be my final answer. Distribute and then look to see if there's anything you can simplify by combining any like terms in the addition or subtraction step. All right. In this next problem, we're going to distribute the 2y into the parentheses, then the negative 3. We want to pay attention to the fact that it's a negative 3 there getting distributed. And we do that second term. So first, let's take the 2y. So we're going to take the 2y, and we're going to distribute that into the parentheses. So that's going to be equals 2y times y squared is 2y to the third. 2y times negative 5, that should be a y. Excuse the typo there. So negative 5y. Okay. So 2y times negative 5 would be negative 10y squared. And 2y times 3 would be plus 6y. Now, in this case, I'm going to line them up underneath one another when I distribute the negative 3 into the parentheses. Pay attention. It's a negative 3 times y squared would be a negative 3y squared. Then negative 3 times negative 5y would be a positive 15y. And then negative 3 times 3 would be minus 9. And you can see we do this, we have these like terms here. We can combine by adding with what they're lined up underneath. Because I have the y squareds lined up, the y. So 2y to the third is just 2y to the third. There's nothing to add with that. Now I can make negative 10 plus negative 3 is negative 13y squared. And then plus 21y and then minus 9. So depending on which way you prefer to write these out and organize them, you can do it where you just line them up in one row here, right, or all the way across, and then find your like terms. You can add or subtract, or it can be helpful sometimes to line them up underneath one another so you can see where those like terms are. It doesn't matter which way you do it. 
right? You're going to get the same right answer at the end if you follow those steps properly. So that would be up to you on how you like to write it out and organize it. All right, let's see another example here. We have 3m squared plus m minus 6 times negative 4m plus 8. Okay, so again, there could be different ways to write this out. So one of the things you can do for writing these out is you can write it underneath one another. Like if you had 127 times 43, you did 127 times 43, all right? And then you multiply. So we could do the same thing here if we wanted. We can take 3, not x, 3m squared plus m minus 6 times negative 4m plus 8. And then just like in the problem above it where I would take the 3 and multiply each of the terms by 3. Now I can take the 8 and multiply each of these by 8. Okay, so I can write this out and do 8 times negative 6 is negative 48. 8 times m is 8m. And 8 times 3m squared would be 24m squared. That would be a plus 8m because it's a positive. And then I could take the negative 4m times negative 6. That's going to be 24, positive 24m. Then right, I'm taking negative 4m times each of these terms. So now times m. So negative 4m times m would be a negative times a positive, negative 4m squared. So I'd have negative 4m squared. And I take negative 4 times 3 would be negative 12m to the third. And now I can add these together. So I add these together, I'd get negative 48, positive 32m, plus 20m squared and minus 12m to the third. And that would be my final answer. So again, you've seen some different ways you can write these out and organize them. I'm gonna show you which way I prefer as I go through and do problems. I'm gonna only do them one way now going forward, but it doesn't matter to me if you, if you figure out that one method works better for you. It might be good to try a couple of them and see which way you think works best for you. And sometimes depending on the way the problem's written, maybe one might be a better choice for you. So any method that works, that's fine with me. Just make sure you're paying attention in particular to the negative signs when you're multiplying and then to where the like terms are that you can combine after the distributing part. All right, a little break here. You might have seen this at the bottom here as we're doing this problem. Maybe you've contemplated it. It'd be a difficult uh, question. I doubt many of you would know it, but the first number one song in the Billboard Top 100 chart. Okay, so the Billboard Top 100 chart started a uh, long time ago when they were uh, recording which sheet music sold the most. And then it progressed to which songs are played most by disc jockeys or jukeboxes or, you know, then through uh, the ages of uh, digital and streaming and everything else, how to track the best songs in the land. Well, the Billboard Top 100, the first time they put together a comprehensive list of the most popular song at the time was in 1958. And it came out on August 4th, Poor Little Fool. It was a doo-wop kind of country rock song by Ricky Nelson. It stayed on the top of the charts for two weeks. So the first ever Billboard Hot 100 number one song, Poor Little Fool by Ricky Nelson. All right, moving on to some more multiplying polynomials. So again, we should be practicing these on your own and playing the video after you pause it and do the problem and see how you did. So this first example here, number five, 3x minus 4y times 6x plus y. So distribute, okay, 3x into the parentheses. That's going to be 3x times 6x is 18x squared plus 3xy. x times y would just be written as xy. And then we're going to multiply the negative 4 into the parentheses. That's negative 24xy. yx and xy are the same. I'm going to keep it as xy so it's similar to the term before it. And then negative 4 times y would be negative 4y squared. And I combine my like terms here. So I'm going to get 18x squared minus 21xy, or yx, it's the same thing. We are multiplying, order doesn't matter. And that would be my answer for that one. In this next example, I'm going to distribute. Again, I want to take each of those terms in the first polynomial and distribute it into the parentheses in the second polynomial. So I'm going to take the 5n to the third and start there. So I'm going to multiply 5n to the third into the parentheses. So that's going to be negative 35n to the fifth, okay, minus 15 n to the fourth. Then I'm going to take the 2 n squared. I'm going to distribute that into the parentheses. So 2 times negative 7 would be negative 14 n to the fourth minus 6 n to the third. And I'm going to take the negative 12 and distribute that into the parentheses. And I'm going to have 7 times 12 is 84. A negative times a negative, so positive 84 n squared. And then negative 12 
times negative 3 to the positive 36n. And now I want to find like terms to combine. So negative 35n to the fifth, no like term there. But I do here. Right? I have like terms. Negative 15 minus 14 would be negative 29n to the fourth. Then I have minus 6n to the third plus 84n squared plus 36n. So it's a long polynomial with a lot of terms. Okay, five different terms that are all separated by addition or subtraction. I did, after I multiplied, have one pair of like terms. They're not always going to be next to each other, so be aware of that. You could have an end to the fourth here, maybe an end to the fourth over here. As long as they're like terms, you can add and subtract them. All right, let's see number seven. So something a little different here. We want to multiply the 3x into parentheses. So it looks a little different, but it's still just the distributive property. We have something multiplying into the parentheses. So we're going to have 3x to the third plus 15x squared minus 18x. And then I'm going to distribute negative 10. That's a key here. Make sure we're distributing a negative into the parentheses. So it's going to be negative 30x squared plus 120x. And then I need to look for any like terms. So 3x to the third, no like term there. Then I have minus 15x squared, right? These are like terms here and here. Right? They're not next to each other, but that's fine. I don't really wrote an n there. That'd be an x. So I have negative 18x plus 120x. So that's going to be plus 102x. And that would be my polynomial, a trinomial in that case. When I multiply the 3x into parentheses, the negative 10 into parentheses, and then look for any like terms that I can combine with addition or subtraction. All right, number eight, a little application here. Dimensions of a rectangle are 10x minus 5 and 2x plus 5. So if you wanted to draw it out, you don't necessarily need to, but if I drew out a rectangle, okay, and I add 10x, not 12, I'm combining the 10 and the 2 together there, that's not very useful. So 10x minus 5 and 2x plus 5. The area is length times width, the two dimensions of the rectangle. So I'm going to take 2x plus 5 and I multiply it by 10x minus 5. And I can distribute the 2x into the parentheses. I get 20x squared minus 10x plus 50x minus 25. So it's 20x squared plus 40x minus 25. And that would be an expression that represents the area. We're not finding an area of 110 inches squared or something. We're getting a simplified expression that represents the area. Length times the width. We'd have a polynomial there for our answer. So multiplying polynomials, distributive property, and then look for any like terms you can combine with the addition or subtraction that exists after you multiply.